young girls in their 20s, Asian, um, were following her and they attacked her from behind, dragged her to the floor and then kicked her, punched her and then one of them got a knife out and slashed her arm. She was walking to work um, quite casually because it was a lovely bright day um, from the station and that three girls were behind her. Um, she hadn't taken much notice of it. They were obviously chanting. She didn't know at that moment what they were chanting and then all of a sudden they attacked her uh, saying Allah, Allah. And then obviously she was on the floor and they were punching, and kicking her and then one of them got a knife out and cut her from her wrist. So we've had three terrorist attacks in the United Kingdom in less than three months. And as I'm sure some of you know, the takeaway from that, from most of the media, the BBC and some of the larger liberal media outlets, and of course, assorted celebrities is, of course, just love. Love one another. Love is all we need. Coexist. Blah, blah, blah. Well, how did that work out? Well, not that well, apparently, because no sooner had the lights dimmed on the Ariana Grande benefit concert than there was another attack, uh, another knife attack, underreported by the BBC and most of the rest of the media in the United Kingdom, um, with two young women attacking another young woman with a knife and screaming, this is for Allah. Gee, I wonder what their religion is. And of course, a uh, more widely reported uh, terrorist attack. Well, it wasn't reported as a terrorist attack, but he did say that he was doing it in the name of Allah, and he did say he was a soldier for Allah, uh, and attacked uh, ter attacked a policeman outside of Notre Dame Cathedral. The symbolism of attacking a Christian cathedral is probably not lost on most sane people, but unfortunately, it is lost on most of the liberal corrupt media and the empty brained celebrities. Now you might think that uh, all these uh, attacks would, and the denials uh, from politicians and media that it has anything to do with Islam might wear a little bit thin with the populace. And it has, it has worn thin with, with a significant portion, but not the majority, unfortunately. As I think we saw in the recent UK election, where um, Jeremy Corbyn, the, who, who never met a terrorist he didn't like um, and has actually been on platforms and, and, and celebrated various terrorists uh, over his political career, came within an inch of actually becoming prime minister, uh, at least in a minority government, uh, prime minister of the United Kingdom, a scary thought indeed. I mean, the United Kingdom's already going down the drain. Um, but that, that definitely would have been the final nail, uh, final nail in the coffin. So, um, yeah, once again, just, just as it happened in Canada, a lot of the millennials came out and thought that Theresa May was a, was a big meanie and blaming too much on um, the poor downtrodden Muslims, even though she refused to say it had anything to do with Islamic terror. She only talked about the extremists. Uh, and as Morrissey famously said, extremist what? Extremist bunny rabbits? Anyway, they came out uh, in enough numbers to take away about seven or eight seats. I'm not sure what the final tally was, but I think it was about seven or eight seats. And throw the United Kingdom into even more political turmoil at a time when it certainly did not need it. And uh, as we saw, the under, I guess, say under 30 crowd or maybe under 30 or 35 crowd, the majority of them really believe all you need is love. Diversity, yay. That's all it'll take to put down the scourge of these extremist terrorists. And like Voldemort, you can never say their name. You can never say they're Islamic. You can never say they're Muslim. And of course, the other the other big takeaway from the millennial crowd is is and and this is the official narrative um, from politicians and their uh, colluding media is just carry on, carry on as before. Otherwise, the terrorists have won. And of course, for millennial, that sounds great. Well, we'll just go see another Ariana Grande concert. We'll go shopping and so on and so forth but is carrying on as if nothing 
has happened, is that really saying the terrorists haven't won? Because I would say it's exactly the opposite. We continue to deny or pretend that Islamic terror doesn't exist, and they continue to destroy Western civilization with our help. And there's been a lot of allusions to, you know, the stiff upper lip of, of the British and how they faced steep odds uh, during the Blitz in the Second World War and uh, stared down Nazism. Well, yeah, but they were allowed to identify the enemy. They were allowed to go forth and fight the enemy. Here it is, they're attacked, and then they go, well, let's not jump to conclusions. Uh, they can scream, this is for all, all they want, and you know, politicians will come right back and say, oh no, it, they're extremists, it has absolutely nothing to do with, with Islam. And furthermore, with all the attacks going on and, and all the talk about security lapses, uh, the blame, uh, the finger of blame being pointed at both Theresa May and London Mayor Sadiq Khan, um, who, as you may or may not know, is, is a Muslim. They have talked about how they, they don't have the resources to identify all of these um, extremist quotation marks. Uh, they, of course, ignore all the radicalizing that's going on in, in various mosques. They, they know that it's going on. They, they know who they are. They just pretend it's not happening, as, as I think uh, was widely reported. Um, one of the London Bridge attacker, attackers was on a documentary called The Jihadi Next Door, yet that didn't raise even a scintilla of alarm, apparently, with authority. So there's no police resources for tracking down uh, returning jihadists from Syria and Iraq or uh, radical imams. However, there doesn't seem to be any limit to the amount of police resources that can be used in arresting anti-Islamic uh, movements like uh, the Paul Golding and um, Jada Franson um, of Britain First, and of course Tommy Robinson, who's been arrested several times, uh, most recently uh, between uh, the uh, terror attack on Westminster Bridge and the Manchester um, bombing. Now, one would think, a sane person would think that with the amount of jihadis and radicalization and terror cells that they've identified in the United Kingdom, perhaps they'd be better served in the interests of the people and saving lives and going after those people rather than arresting the members of Britain first. Uh, I left out Paul Weston has also been arrested several times. Uh, once for saying the words of former Prime Minister Winston Churchill uh, in public. So with those priorities from the British police in Scotland Yard, it's no wonder that terrorism is so endemic in the United Kingdom. Um, and of course, similar policies um, are happening all over Europe. Um, now, in response to the lack of security or perceived lack of security from, from some corners, Sadiq Khan uh, has announced, and this is of course setting uh, his priorities, he has announced uh, setting up a website where people can report Islamophobia. Islamophobia, of course, being the popular uh, bugaboo of Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, the former substitute drama teacher and trust fund baby, uh, who never tires of visiting a new mosque or visiting an old mosque and uh, pledging his allegiance to Allah. Going so far uh, in the last election campaign to issue a photo of his both his wife, uh, who won't take his didn't take his last name until the election, by the way, uh, a picture of his wife and his mother both veiled or both wearing headscarves, I should I should say, but uh, just to demonstrate what good submissive Muslim women they are. They would of course say this is all done in the name of diversity, diversity yay, uh, as the progressive never tire of cheering. However, it's not really diversity if it only goes one way. If they're, if they're demanding that we accept their cultures and, and their values and subjugate all Western values, like for instance, freedom of expression, 
freedom of uh, speech and, and now as it seems even freedom of thought, then we don't really have diversity. We have encroaching is Islamicism. But unfortunately, it seems that we in the West are only going to wake up to this, or the majority of us are only going to wake up to this, when it's too late, when gay men are no longer allowed to walk hand in hand down the street in cities like Amsterdam. That's already happening, by the way. But soon it'll be New York and Montreal. And women will no longer be allowed to wear bikinis on the beach. And no amount of Ariana Grande concerts is going to change that fact. This is the future we are heading to. And it doesn't seem that any number of knife, bomb, gun, truck attacks with the perpetrators screaming, this is for Allah, Allah and ISIS is taking credit, no amount seems to be able to change the course of the decline of Western civilization. Well, that's kind of a bummer, isn't it? Uh, and I hate to go out on a low note, um, which seems to be the case in most of my videos. Um, I guess if we're looking for a high note in the news this week, um, it could be that Trump was somewhat vindicated. That's a bit of a can of worms I'm not going to open up in this video, where I actually don't think I'm even going to do a video on that. Uh, others have covered it uh, quite extensively. But since... President Trump is the only Western leader that is speaking out and doing anything uh, to attempt to combat the rise of Islam, uh, radical Islam, or really it seems to be one and the same thing. I can only wish the present, the current president of the United States good fortune. So with that, I will say adieu and as always, Please like, share, and subscribe, and if you're feeling a tad generous, please feel free to put a dollar or two in the tip jar, in the virtual tip jar, my Patreon account, uh, link in the description. And once again, thanks for watching and listening to Bourbon and Bullets. People come from everywhere. Terrorism expert John Thompson says this type of attack often has a far reaching impact, and that's the point. Well, it's also, of course, the problem is that we've had witnesses to every major attack. There are Canadians, people who are uh, victimized, and sometimes the perpetrators of major attacks have been Canadians. You know, the problem is here, too.